Germain Duloc was born on November 17, 1882, in Amiens, Picardy, France. She was born into quite a bourgeois family, her father being a military officer and her mother a well-educated, sophisticated woman with an affinity for the arts. She lived with her grandmother in Paris most of the time, since her family required them to move constantly. She obtained the surname Duloc from a previous marriage, but they divorced in 1920 and Germain would go on to be in a relationship with director Marianne Colson Malville until Duloc's death on July 20th, 1942. As an adult, after her parents died, she moved to Paris full-time, where she started combining her interest in feminist and socialist theory with journalism. She worked for the first feminist publication in Paris, La Française, where she would interview a myriad of known female artists. She would then go on to work on the editorial staff of La Fronde, a radical feminist journal. This marked an interest within Duloc to bring a feminist point of view to already existing formal problems. She started to gain interest in the world of cinema in 1910, where her previously stated interest in feminism started to flourish. She pushed for the creation of a pure cinema, believing that cinema as a medium owed nothing and had no connection to previous literary and theatrical precedents. Sandy Flitterman Lewis said that Duloc concentrated on things such as light, movement, and form over content-based creations such as narrative causality and visual continuity of the traditional forms of commercial cinema. To her, bringing a feminist point of view didn't only mean portraying women in a certain way or discussing relevant feminist topics, but having the form and voice be completely different. This led her to manipulate formal cinematic forms already known to audiences to create a new different alternative to dominant film practices. Her most known work is her adaptation of Anthony Nortaud's La Coquille et le Clergyman. This collaboration ended up being messy to say the least. At the premiere, there are multiple accounts that say it turned out to be very aggressive. It might have been because of the depiction of the obsessive clergyman over someone else's wife and the uncomfortable position all the male surrealist artists were put in when Duloc does not allow both the clergyman in the film and the audience watching it violate this woman's privacy and autonomy. Artaud was not a fan of the adaptation, saying that it was too different from his original story and claimed creative betrayal. Funnily enough, the reaction the film got by forcing people into new yet uncomfortable points of view by appealing to the senses is what Artaud wrote about years later in his manifesto, The Theater of Cruelty. Which leads me to question if he was actually unhappy with the adaptation or with the gender politics behind it, addressed by a queer woman. Nevertheless, Duloc's contribution to film should not be overshadowed although it is argued whether or not her adaptation of Artaud's La Coquille et le Clergyman was the first surrealist film, she was a pioneer in avant-garde cinema.